This is Coffee Country and Cody. Cody. From Roy A. Cup's living room on the Grand Ole Opry Plaza. That's our new studio home. Uh, welcome to all the Triskaidekaphobes on Friday <laughs> the 13th. <laughs> I was not this prepared is, for that word this the, early. The fear this of is your day. This is your big day. <laughs> this is your day to freak completely out, people. Your fear of Friday the 13th or the number 13 or all things 13, I guess. That's yeah. Kelly Sutton. That's Charlie Matos. Annie and I just off camera over there with Tigger watching her from the top of her computer. She's got a little Tigger animal that Daddy Frank yeah. in Arkansas, who's got a birthday on this Friday the 13th. He is 81 in Greenwood, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And then Rock Solid Roberts is upstairs in Master Control this morning. We all got the uh, Dress in Black memo, apparently. Yeah. Totally well, by it's accident, Friday the 13th. But, well, that, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. an omen. You didn't even know. Yeah. I, You know what? I had a friend that honestly, for like three years in a row, she had a car accident and then something else happened and she finally got to where Friday the 13th if there was one she would just stay home honestly well I'm working the opera tonight so thanks for putting that on <laughs> it's my gonna head. be fine <laughs> what could go wrong It'd well you might want to tune in tonight that's It'll all I'm fine. saying you it's gonna know. be great tune in at 7 we'll be on the air at 7 13 <laughs> that's, that's, that's right that's it yeah, yeah. Well, I was just when, when we said omen possible, Bill. the word omen <laughs> came up I remember Dick Gilbert an award winning traffic reporter at WHAS Louisville <laughs> We were on the air together, post Derby traffic. Okay, oh, I was in the studio it. running the Derby, the Derby broadcast yeah. from Churchill Downs, and Dick was doing traffic. And first report, he mentioned there was an automobile accident at like the ex, one of the major exits of Churchill Downs, right? Yeah. And I said, "Well, boy, that's an omen." And he goes, "No, it's a Buick." <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. What you got going on over there on your side? Uh, we're talking about all the things that are going on in entertainment news, and we are starting with Kelsey Ballerini. Yesterday was her birthday. She got the best birthday present ever, selling out Madison Square Garden. Woo! Woo-hoo! All the details on that coming up in just a little bit. Miranda Lambert at the VMAs for the very first time. She was a presenter, but she was also on the red carpet, and someone there asked her her favorite country moment of 2024 so far. Which the answer might surprise you. Excited about telling you all about that. And Kip Moore signing with a new label. So we're getting new music from Kip Moore under a new label. Plus, Dolly is celebrating the weekend with her wines. So if you're going to get drunk, do it with Dolly. (laughs) We have breaking news. Breaking news. This just released. Hold on. Music City Walk of Fame has announced the inductees for 2024. This is so exciting. Okay. So uh, we have a Walk of Fame. If you haven't been there, if you haven't been to Nashville recently, you need to stop by and see it. And we get to play stars each and every year. We get a new class that's going in. This year, Jimmy Buffett will now have a permanent star on the Music City Walk of Fame. As well as legendary gospel quartet, the Fairfield Four. So very excited for them. And Bill, I know you're going to be excited about this one. In honor of the upcoming 100th anniversary of the Grand Ole Opry, our executive chairman of the board, Colin Reed, is going to be receiving a star (laughs) on the Music City Walk of Fame. This is all going to be happening October 30th. And there's one more inductee, Bill Cody. You are getting a star on the Music City Walk of Fame. Congratulations. This is not happening to me right now. It is happening to you right now. I've been there as a host for all of them. Well, and guess who the, has to uh, host this year because you're getting inducted. <laughs> and that class, whoa, what a great class to go in with, huh? Isn't that incredible? Oh, Congratulations. my Congratulations. It has been a long time coming. You, of course, have been here for 30 years and just it's it is so well deserved. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. What? What's the date? When should I get? October 30th. (laughs) October 30th. Yes. All right. Get your stuff cleaned. Get ready for it. My wife is going to lose her mind for the next month and a half. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Right, right. About, about what to wear. <laughs> write a note that Lily doesn't have to go to school that day that's so right. she can sometimes see Popo wow. get inducted. So. Popo oh, gets yeah. his star. Yeah. That's, Congratulations. Uh, that's, boy, that's so special. And we have some friends that are here to celebrate that we'll talk to coming up in just oh, a few no, minutes. Oh, no, get some surprises. With more surprises You guys the way. have been good at keeping secrets. Thank you. Oh, we got food, too. I'm very oh. excited. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's that. Uh, uh, it's Coffee Country and Cody. And uh, well, thank you for breaking that news and being so sweet in the way you did it. More Coffee Country and Cody is on WSM.
Welcome back in. If you are just joining us, we just surprised Bill Cody, telling him he will be receiving a star on the Music City Walk of Fame this year. Congratulations. <laughs> I hope we held it up and it was a big big enough surprise for you, right? I got a prototype already. Look at that. Oh. Huh? It's going to be even bigger than that. <laughs> and that's what it looks like on the walkway of stars down there. It looks just like that. The best part is you've hosted this for so many years that Dina had to call me and say, hey, we're surprising him. So now I have, I'm going to host so that you can just sit back and enjoy it as one of the inductees. This year. October the 30th yes. is our date. So let's go back on the history of the Walk of Fame and how it all started, whose idea it was originally. I want to say Hank Jr. was in that first class, and Ronnie Millsap was in that first class. And the Fisk Jubilee, Fisk Jubilee Singers. singers. That, that's, wow. Okay. I can't remember who else. We've had 100 stars. <laughs> You're going to be like 130. Oh, is that, is that what my number is? <laughs> we started in 2006. And then we've had amazing ceremonies. Yeah. You think about all the special ones. But we started really with trying to, to, to really honor the people that have, you know, made such a difference in Music City. And what's the role of the NCVC day-to-day -day in our community? Because it's so impactful. And your predecessor, mm -hmm. Butch Spiridon, mm -hmm. who also has a star in the Music City Walk of Fame. He does. He wouldn't take it until he retired, though. He right, said, hey, right. It's like he, the fix is on. Otherwise. He's down there shining it now, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's he, the Butch I know. <laughs> he, he loves it. So our, our job really is to market and sell the city. So to bring in visitors, to bring in conventions, to really, you know, brand the city and promote it and, and make sure that people love it and come here and enjoy it. And Andrea Arnold, they are doing that in record numbers. Absolutely. They keep coming. And uh, the great part about the Walk of Fame and what makes it so special, it truly is an attraction for all of those people who come here and really want to know the story of how we became Music City. And it's the performers, it's the producers, it's people like you Thank who help goodness. give us the fabric of that creative community. So you are so well deserved to be in here. Uh, long time coming and glad we could do it Thank on your you. special anniversary. And you, you're smooth girl because by <laughs> now she would have reached out to me. She would have. And I didn't really give it a second thought until right. just this morning when things started coming together. Yeah, like White Kelly now. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. This Andrea funny. usually reaches out to me with the list, and I feel special because I know a secret. That's right. For a little while That's until right. a press release comes out, and I hadn't heard from you, but now I have. That's right. You were <laughs> That's the right. secret. You were the secret. We were so excited. Yeah, and you know what you described about uh, the city and all those different facets of it is, with the inductees, the hundred and how many now will it be? 103. Well, 103. With, I think the full class will be 107. 108. Yeah. 108. 108. And uh, it really is spelled out if you look at those individuals mm -hmm. and what they did to get there. I mean, it really does cover a lot of different territory, doesn't it? Musical interests and... Absolutely. And so diverse, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's country music, a lot of country music artists in here, but it's everyone from Jack White to Keb Mo to um, Little Richard. I mean, just really diverse. I still see and hear Little Richard. You remember Martina McBride <laughs> went in that year. Mm -hmm. And it was cold, it was a fall Freezing. event. Freezing. And she was wearing this little black dress thin dress and was so stoic and just sat there and little Richard was wearing this gold May suit if and you recall a blanket. and had yeah he was That's bundled right. up in blankets and his handlers were taking care of his mm -hmm. every need and as I was introducing his segment he goes shut up Bill I'm freezing <laughs> That's one of my moments. <laughs> and Trace Adkins saying I can't believe little Richard no, knows who I am <laughs> Remember that. As I look over your shoulder here in our studio, in the A Cup House studio, which, how do you like the new place looking oh, out here beautiful. at the entrance to the Grand Ole Opry it's House? Right? Uh, I see Laura Hollingsworth, mm -hmm. with Ryman Hospitality Marketing, who's on the board. She's on the board, and she's one of the reasons that you right. are going into the Walk of Fame. <laughs> 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 it's so special. Good Kelly, you got Lord. anything to add? Well, I think we just toast at this point. Oh! We have champagne. You kind of spoke this into existence with Dolly's new wine line, right? I did. Oh. We popped the top. Cheers to you. Cheers to 30 years. 
thank you for everything that you do, not only for us as a brand, but for what you do for country music. We love you. And I love you back. That's right. And if people are interested, as people watch this morning, and they have an artist or a, a person or an entity that they think is worthy of a star in the Walk of Fame, how do they go about that? They can is nominate. That... Go to our website, visitmusiccity.com. Look for Music City Walk of Fame. There's nomination forms on there. Uh -huh. Send that in, and then it goes to our Music City Inc. Foundation Board of Directors, and they vote. You got anything you want to tease ahead to? Well, I think that's the biggest surprise that we just announced. <laughs> that was the one that we've been keeping all morning long, if you're just joining us. Bill Cody going into the Music City Walk of Fame this year, <laughs> along with Jimmy Buffett, the Fairfield Four, and our executive chairman of the board, Colin Reed. So it's going to happen on October the 30th. To quote come Monday from Jimmy Buffett. Mm -hmm. Come October 30th, it'll be all right. There it is. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that star. <laughs> that is going into permanent cement downtown. Can I quote you? Yes. Quoting Florida Georgia Line? Yes. Feel good, don't it, baby? <laughs> <laughs> or Garth. <laughs> Giddy got dog a while. That's it. <laughs> that is it. If you are just joining us, we made the announcement <laughs> that the Music City Walk of Fame inductees have been announced for 2024. And included in that class is our colleague, our friend, Bill Cody. He is going to have a star on the Music City Walk of Fame so we can go down and have a picnic around it. <laughs> we could put candles, we could decorate it for Halloween, and then for Christmas, we can put little Christmas trees all around it. And we'll do It'll a seance nicest... for Halloween. Oh, <laughs> yeah. like that. Well, no, it's gonna be the Call nicest back the star. country music greats. <laughs> we tease all the time that we know some people that are down there like spit shining theirs to make sure it looks really good. Because <laughs> you know, the birds fly over. Yeah. You got to make sure that it's clean, but yeah, kind of like the uh, the plaques in the Country Music Hall of Fame rotunda. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you know, make sure they the look good. Different artists will say, "Hey, next time you're down there, uh, polish my plaque. Make just sure make I'm sure. looking, yeah, you know, looking the part." You still know. looks nice. <laughs> yeah, we just announced it is happening on October 30th this year. Included with Bill going into the Music City Walk of Fame, we have legendary. Jimmy Buffett. He will be there posthumously getting his star on the Music City Walk of Fame, as well as the Fairfield Four, legendary gospel quartet. And then our chairman of the board, former CEO Colin Reed, will also have a star. Um, do you have a preference if your star is above Colin's or below Colin's? Are we going to have I, that? I want mine on top of his. <laughs> <laughs> I said we got to figure out. <laughs> Are you going in first? I, I mean, you probably should let him go first. But congratulations again. It's happening October 30th. It's at 1 p.m. So if you're going to be in town, you can come downtown and watch it all happen. It's it's always fun. It's a beautiful ceremony. You've hosted all of them. Yeah, since the very first 20, one, there was a member of the uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Okay. That, that hosted and then but I covered it for GAC yeah we did a television special yep. around that class and then subsequent to that I started doing it in the second year and the only one I missed doggone it all was Loretta because she had a one-off <gasps> that's right and I was hospitalized I had an emergency procedure gallbladder issue and it took me out and um Butch Spiritin filled in I was there for that and Jack White inducted yep. Loretta for and he went in that day as well. Jack did too. I think they were both at the same time. But I, it is just an incredible ceremony. And since you are going to sit back and relax and be inducted, then I have to fill your shoes. So now you got to help me hey, with that. You got the best seat in the house. I do. Yeah. I'm so excited about all of it. Again, October the 30th. Well, congratulations to Kelsey Ballerini. What a great week it's been for everybody in country music, especially, especially our friend Kelsey, because yesterday was her birthday and... She sold out Madison Square Garden. Ah, how cool is this? First time she's ever played Madison Square Garden. It's a one night only show. It's happening October the 29th. And let me just say, she is over the moon because when she woke up, that thing sold out in minutes and it was on her birthday. So what a great birthday present. She's going to feature openers Tiger Lily Gold and potential breakup song duo Allie and AJ. She said, you know what? This is just, it made me speechless all day long. So happy birthday, Kelsey. Congratulations. The new album patterns is coming out october 25th i have heard a few of the songs on this already and it's so good guys it's really good starting at point guard tonight for the new york knickerbockers please welcome <laughs> kelsey ballerini 
Oh, she and Walt Frazier be a good uh, backcourt. Ooh, yeah, back wow. in the day. Yeah. That's nice. How about she and Messier? Because the New York Rangers oh, played that's there home as well. There too. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. both still there? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. I've never been. So yeah, it's it's just special walking in. It really is. Very excited mm-hmm. for her. VMAs just happened, and we watched it all go down. I know maybe three of the people that they talked about. One of them being Post Malone, and the other one was Miranda Lambert because she was on the red carpet. She was also a presenter at the VMAs for the very first time she got to present song of the year to pop singer sabrina carpenter now miranda caught up with billboard on the red carpet and the reporter asked her of all of the country music moments that have happened in 2024 which one are you most proud of here's what she had to say i like seeing laney wilson star rise like she's a, a great pal she's a sister and i just got to listen to her record fully through last night finally and it's it's bad and i'm just i'm proud to know her and i'm proud of her and I've, i'm loving watching her journey that's so cool and, that she lifted her up. And N I G H T in East Texas is Nat. 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 Yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. You were wondering what that word was. <laughs> in case you want something to make your drink colder, you get. Ass. That's right. That's right. Okay, so Miranda's <laughs> new album, Postcards from Texas, is out today. If you haven't listened to it, highly recommend it. It is really, really good. Uh, Postcards from Texas is the name of it, and you can listen to it because it is out right now. And you know, in Texas, the colloquial for a convenience store is an ice house. I didn't know that. Yeah, because I'm going down at the ice house. And it could be any convenience store. but Really? And there's some history there, I guess, back in the days when you... Huh. Block ice was the thing, I and mean, you would go to some country store or general store to get get your ice and groceries. And, I had no idea. Uh, yeah, ice house. Ice house. Huh. Unless you're Miranda again, ice house. Ice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have something great to talk about for our friend Kit Moore. We love him. Love when he comes to the Opry. It's always a fun night. Well, he was about to release an independent album and um virgin came along and said hey why don't we partner together so virgin music group who's he is now signed with he's going to be using their label services he has a new song called live here to work it's coming out september the 20th he announced that he was signing with virgin he said you know what i was ready to do it independent but when this person came along and offered this to me and we talked about it this label group is the one that made the most sense to me so i'm excited to be a part of that notice how how many things in that picture just how many things we do on rooftops in Nashville now? Well, we have a lot of them. We do. I think you have to use the space. If you have it, you know, you're <laughs> like, we paid a lot of money to make this rooftop look nice. So let's do the photo op up there. You bet. That's how it works. <laughs> All right. So we were drinking champagne earlier uh, as celebrating the big announcement that Bill is getting a star on the Music City Walk of Fame. But if you don't like champagne and you want something else, Dolly has you covered because Dolly's wines are now available. You can go to dollywines.com. <laughs> Look at her holding the bottle. Oh, I just love her so much. She has uh, different types, Chardonnay, Rosé, and Prosecco. So if you don't want to do a champagne, a Prosecco is a nice choice. They are available. She said they have a little sparkle in every bottle designed to bring joy and connection to every gathering. Bryce Leatherwood is just kind enough to say, hey, I would like the world premiere hung up on you all over the world on the radio home of the Grand Ole Opry, 650 AM WSM, and you just did. Yes, sir. No better place to do it than right here. <laughs> so was that the first time that you got to hear it on the radio? That was the first time. And, uh, oh, yeah. God is good. The opportunities here at the Opry are, are incredible. I'm just so grateful to be here this morning with y'all. Thank y'all. Yeah. Season 22, The Voice. He won the whole thing. That's what I hear. But you were a wild card guy, weren't you? Yeah. Right? I, I, I wasn't supposed to win that thing. That's not. I, I was not supposed so to win the show. Explain <laughs> how that works for people who don't know like the inner workings of what wild card means in relation to moving up. Yeah, so wild card means you're in the bottom. Like, so I think each team had a, a bottom person. So there was four teams. So I was one of the bottom one week. And pretty much you have to, you have five minutes after you perform your last song to to get voted to go through, to continue on the show. And yeah, I, I was the first person to ever be voted through as a wild card and end up winning the show. So it was a, it was pretty cool, and um, it was just what a life-changing experience that was in general. It was just awesome. So the sports analogy is you're a wild-card team. You get into the playoffs, and you go on to win the Super Bowl. That's it, man. That's it. <laughs> well, you're Tom Brady drafted in the sixth round, and you win six of them. Right? Yeah, so, so. I, I wish like you that, that career. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Gosh, I can take half of that. Awesome. <laughs> when did you decide to audition for 
the voice. Because I think there are so many people out there that are on the fence and they're like, I don't know. That seems like it's a lot. Oh, man, I always say chase your dreams. But the reality was, was I was about to graduate college at Georgia Southern and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I loved music. I knew I, that that was it never felt like work. It never felt like, you know, a, a th- it never felt like a career. I didn't know if that could happen. But I was like, you know, wh- what? what's a way that I could get to Nashville? What's a way I could get to this town and, and have a, a base? And I just kind of saw it as like a PR stunt for me to yeah. get here earlier and like say, hey, look at me. Here's a video of me with a couple thousand likes. And uh, it turned into a whole giant monster that I, I had no idea it would, it would ever turn into. So it's just, uh, it changed my life. So here I am. Did you consider <laughs> Idol or any of the other reality competitions yeah you know I've I, I did idle back in like 2019 and I was I was so green I didn't know what I was doing and uh, I made it pretty I made it pretty far to where you get to go in front of the judges but they said you know you need more time and I was like you're right I did I didn't even, I wasn't even playing shows at that point and then I uh, spent the next two years playing shows consistently and regularly uh, three times a week four hours a night so uh, earning my stripes as, as they say and uh, that got me to be prepared to do something like the voice what was the best piece of advice you got from being on that show? Really was, I, well, I found myself on that show. I found my sound. I found who I was. And uh, I mean, Blake Shelton told me, he said, man, just, just be yourself. Don't be nobody else. Nobody's like you. So don't try to be like nobody else but yourself. Well, the cool part is you've gotten truly both experiences because you've gotten millions of people watching and paying attention on TV. And this is going to sound like a joke, but I don't mean it as so. But you've also gotten the four hours in a bar where hardly anybody is. I mean, you're playing over people talking and dancing and they're, they're making drinks and people are yelling. And, right. and if you don't experience both of those, I, I, they're both valuable parts of an education, I think. You oh, know? 100%. Yeah. I think, you know, you got to earn your stripes and... Uh, you know, the voice was, was that to the, the max, I feel like, because yeah. when the cameras say go, you got to go. So um, it, was, uh, it was a very, very unique experience that um, you can't ever replicate. It's like grabbing a, a bolt of lightning. It's just that <laughs> adrenaline is, is insane. But I'm about to experience that tomorrow night. Yes, yes you are. Back. <laughs> Big time. I get that yeah. right back. So. How did the invite come down? Was it a surprise? Did they oh, it was, set I'll, you up? It was a total Kind of like Kelly Sutton did yeah. me earlier <laughs> I when I was... <laughs> <laughs> told I was getting a star in the Music City Walk of Fame. Yeah, and congratulations, man. That's <laughs> huge. That's, that's such an honor. But uh, it was, I was at breakfast at a routine meeting we had at, uh, at a restaurant here in Nashville. And um, I saw my manager's phone camera pop up. And I'm like, what's going on? They're like, are you available September 14th? And I said, what? He says, would you, like to, uh, would you like to make your Grand Ole Opry debut? And I, I lost it. I cried for 20 minutes in a restaurant at 7 o'clock in the morning. So thank you to him. For that but it was uh it was a very special moment and that's uh i've been having dreams about it since that's been what five months ago now that since i found out it's just been uh it's been incredible you know it, it the opry means so much to me i, I hope you all understand that it uh it's so, gonna be the best day of my life tomorrow night so thank y'all what restaurant were you in first watch First watch. Oh, I love first watch. Is that your yeah. breakfast yeah. hang? A cheeky chonga, man. You ever have one of them things? They're yeah. so good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So good. It would taste it even better that morning. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the beautiful part of the Grand Ole Opry. You'll be playing for the very first time. And also on that show is one of the great legends, Connie Smith, who's yes. been a member for 58 years. So it's the it's it's the, the great spectrum of country music right there. It is. You know? When I saw Connie was added to the list this past week, I was like, wow. This is going to be so special, and she's incredible and a hero of mine. So it's just, it's incredible to see generations after generations and me being the fresh new crop. <laughs> you got the full lineup, Charlie, for Saturday night? I do. Mandy Barnett, who's played it over 500 times. She's an Opry star. Uh, Daly and Vincent will be there. Uh, Eric Pasley, one of our favorite oh, singer-songwriters. Mm-hmm. We mentioned Connie Smith. Uh, Deacon Claiburn, a.k.a. Charles Eston, uh, will be mm-hmm. there as well. And uh, you're not the only debut, because Compton and Newberry are going to debut uh, tomorrow night as well. And, of course, it's a Saturday, which means the square dancers. So nice. a lot of fun. The Cherry River Line just played all over the world on WSM Radio from Compton to Newberry's Home in My Heart as they make their way. Another Grand Ole Opry debut guest, Kelly Sutton. Oh, that is so exciting. I can't believe y'all. Have you played it separately or is this the debut? You've played it separately yes, ma'am. individually, but debut together. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And this is my full debut. The full debut. I've never, <laughs> full. I've never, I've, I've been there and I've, I've, 
you've heard me on WSM applauding the loudest. <laughs> but other than that, I've never stepped on the stage, and I cannot wait to get on that stage with Mr. Compton. And oh. Joe, you were a frequent visitor through the years to Prairie Home Companion. Yes, sir. I, with I, Garrison I, Keillor, played, right? I played and sang a lot on Prairie Home, and Mike and I did that show as well. And then Mike with the Nashville Bluegrass Band, I think, did that show as well, didn't you, Mike? Yeah, and Hartford. Hartford. But if you'd played Prairie Home any more than that, they'd have had to hire you full time. You know, I tried. I, <laughs> oh, I tried. <laughs> well, give us a little history lesson, bio, if you will, for people who are hearing you, meeting you for the first time, or obviously for the folks who do know you, they don't need that, but there may be folks who do. Oh, goodness. You mentioned you know, John Hartford. Uh, you were with John. I, I was in in John's band for about five or six years, uh, just just being Hartford's string band and playing old-timey tunes and, and some of John's hits. And uh, Gosh, did that. Worked, worked some of the, the Down from the Mountain, all of that old brother stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, goodness, Nashville Bluegrass Band for, for years and years. And uh, some with David Greer. What else? And then Joe Newberry. Well, you toured with Elvis Costello. Elvis Costello. For and you bit. toured with Elton John and... Uh... And Leon Russell, didn't you? That's not country, is it? Uh, Leon's pretty adjacent. It's adjacent. Uh, adjacent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Elton's from a different country. But oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. oh, yeah. Well, yeah. were you with uh, John Jorgensen in that band as well? Because John toured uh, with uh, with Elton for quite a while, he was, too. Yeah, he was yeah. around some. Yeah. Where are you from, Mike, originally? Where Meridian, Mississippi. Jimmy Rogers' hometown. Oh, yeah. But I don't know how to yodel. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to hear me do that. And how about you, Joe? Where's home? I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, but I grew up in southern Missouri. I'm, I'm uh, uh, from, from the Ozarks and then down into the swamps, down in, in uh, the boot heel of Missouri. But uh, I went to visit a friend of mine in 1982 in North Carolina, and my car broke down, and I stayed. <laughs> I wish I had a more inspiring tale of, of, of being, uh, of being uh, you know, living my future, but that, that was it. It was just a mistake, but, but it worked out all right. If you're going to break down right. somewhere, that's a good place to break down. Yeah. A lot it of good sure music. Oh. And, and Mike, where do you live now? I live in Johnson City, Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Storyteller capital oh, yeah. of the world over uh, there. Oh, there. I've never, I've never actually seen them do that thing. I saw the sign. I see the sign every yeah, time. Jonesboro, I... of course, is just outside oh, yeah. Johnson City. That's the oh, yeah. reference. I'm you got to be nice when you go over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did y'all get together? Joe heard me. Uh, I used to run <laughs> Old Time Week at the Augusta Heritage Center in Elkins, West Virginia, and, and we had a mutual friend um, who was actually taking mandolin lessons from Mike. And I was looking around to hire a mandolin instructor for um, uh, the July 2009 version of the camp. And so we, we did that, and I knew he was going to come visit yeah, and play with us. But then... I was doing a show in Charlotte, North Carolina, and my friend who was doing the show with me had to cancel. I got called out of the country to work. And I, I called Mike up and I said, um, you wouldn't want to like come do a little show in Charlotte, would you? And he, he said, yes, sir. And he got in the car and we, we put together two sets of music uh, about an hour before the show and it sounded just like us, from the very minute we started playing. We oh, looked at each other, and the audience looked around, and the audience, were, they, everybody was looking at each other like, I thought they said they didn't play together, because that blend, that, that blend that you, you can't buy, you can't, you, you can't make it up, it was there from the very minute, and, and Mike and I said, well, we need to do this some more, and we've been doing it ever since. Probably should do it some more. Well, yeah. yes. Yeah. What's the old uh, thing that you say? Uh, I don't we, know. We've been playing. We've been playing long enough. We should be better. Who <laughs> <laughs> was it? Finished one day and said, "I can play better than that, but I never have." <laughs> <laughs> well, you're sitting there with that mandolin, and before we went live, you said, "Well, that's a sound you don't hear much anymore." And I was thinking that. Bill Monroe would have been 113 years old today. Uh, oh man, yeah, man, I miss him. I miss him. How well did you know him? As cantankerous as he could be. <laughs> uh, I, well, I, I know his music a lot better than I got to know him. Uh, his Following his music has changed the whole course of the way I've lived my life up, up until this point. I think that 
that comment and and I got this comment that uh, Joe just made about should we shouldn't we be better? Uh, <laughs> I heard a story about him going up in, uh, to Bean Blossom and they had a, a bunch of long, long-haired people, <laughs> as a friend of mine in Mississippi calls them. Uh, <laughs> had a had a bonfire going down there, and they wanted Bill to come jam with them, and they finally talked him into it. And when he got down there, there was he said there was a banjo player that kept getting right up in front of him, and <laughs> and every which way Bill would turn, he couldn't get away from him. <laughs> and the, and the guy just playing right up his face, and he said, "I've been playing for 13 years," and that's what Bill said. Well, shouldn't you be better? <laughs> <laughs> That's what. That's why. Oh, that's why that's in my head. Did you Did you know him at all, Joe? You know, I I met him a couple of times. I never played with him. Um, the last time I saw him, um, I, I, he was doing a show in Raleigh, North Carolina, and he stayed on the bus until it was time to come mm-hmm. do the show. Mm-hmm. And he got off the bus and he he was stepping down slow and he he sort of walked with his head a little down and and looked frail. Mm. And he stood in the back, and, you know, the announcer, here's my announcer voice, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome the father of bluegrass, Bill Monroe. And when they said the father of bluegrass, he straightened up. Oh, yeah. He didn't walk on stage. <laughs> he flight. strode on stage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he played two sets of the strongest music I've ever heard, da- danced the old Kentucky buck and wing, did a couple of encores, walked off stage, and became... And deflated. And deflated and became the old man again. It was it was stunning to see. Well, you, you paint a beautiful picture there, though. It's bittersweet. Yeah, he, I he, could see it as you were telling me. He'd blow up, blow up like a banny rooster and, and go out. <laughs> <laughs> and play and then come off. Well, you know, uh, uh, along my musical life, I played with the fellows who started the Ray Clay Ramblers, Jim Watson and Bill Hicks and Mike Craver. And... I was a fan before I played with them, and I said to, I said to Bill Hicks, the fiddler, one time, I said, "Y'all are so compelling. I, 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 you know, when you're on stage, I can't take my eyes off you. What is it?" And he said, "Well, we're ourselves. We're just ten percent bigger." <laughs> and I've never forgotten that. And that, and that's what Monroe always struck me as—that he mm-hmm. was always himself, but he was just larger than life when he needed to be. Mm-hmm. Well, the other name that comes to mind, Kelly, as we sit here in his living room, we're in the Acuff house, the home of Roy Acuff, on the Grand Ole Opry Plaza, where you guys are debuting tomorrow night. <laughs> and how did your invite come about? How did we do? Did they surprise you? Uh, it was uh, it, it was it was a surprise in that we we didn't think it was ever going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a, our, our agent. We we started working with a new agent, Katie Kirchner. And last year, when we started working with her, we, we had a, she said, well, let's talk one-year plan, three-year plan, and five-year plan. And I, I piped right up and said, I want our one-year plan in our one-year plan to play the Opry. And we had that conversation 50 weeks ago. <laughs> oh, wow. So we came in under the wire. And so um, we, we got, uh, we got a, a, an inkling back in March. But then uh, a couple of weeks ago, she, she sent a text and said, basically, what are you doing on September 14th? Well, now we know. Debuting yeah, we know. at the Grand Ole Opry. And we'll consider this sound check from the Acuff living room. It's a good way to do it. <laughs> If you told me that was a public domain piece that you found someplace, I would have believed it. But it's that an original is, song from the two of you. That is. And, and high praise. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, I mean that. Um, we appreciate that a lot. Yeah, it, um, we were mostly we were riding around the wilds of Montana. And we had been trying to write this song. And, and we were getting in the song's way. And, and we, finally, we finally figured it out that it, it could be simple. And when things become simple, uh, as Dirk Powell's grandfather used to say, I remember when simple things were beautiful. And that's, that's what we were aiming for. Yeah, it, it, the point of it was to make it sound old. We were, we were trying too hard. Well, Montana once had a travel slogan. It said, the last best place. Oh, that's So the nice. big sky will do things like that. It'll big, inspire big you. Big sky country, right. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Home in my heart. That's Compton and Newberry on their way to the Grand Ole Opry. It's their debut, making history tomorrow night all over the world on WSM Radio as you watch this morning at Circle Country Television.
Lonesome down here on the Cherry River line. 